Necessity is the mother of invention, as the old saying goes. And while there are some amazing and brilliant invention concepts in the world, not all of them are entirely feasible. In this video, I'll take a look at five examples of projects that were doomed to fail from the start, due to simply being impossible. Amazing! Number five, Fontis, the $300,000 self-filling water bottle. In theory, the concept behind the Fontis water bottle had remarkable real-world applications. Utilizing the properties of latent heat vaporization, it was marketed as being able to produce water simply by being exposed to air and light, effectively making it what is commonly known as a Peltier device. Although geared towards cyclists who could strap the bottle into a carrier and produce water as they biked, the technology would have had humanitarian implications too, and for a mere $160 it was a bargain. After the Indiegogo project accrued over $340,000, however, many people were disheartened to realize the Fontis didn't operate as promised. The YouTube channel EEV blog outlined the thermodynamics behind the invention, showing that it would take upwards of 60 plus hours to fill under normal circumstances, that the relative humidity needed to produce results had to be upwards of 80 to 90 percent, and that the actual size of the solar panel needed was several hundred times larger than the iPad size panel that came with the Fontis. In theory, the technology behind it is solid, but in order for it to be really effective, it would have had to be implemented on a much larger scale. It seems a shame that so much ignorance even led to it winning awards, including a mention from the James Dyson Foundation which recognizes young innovators, and subsequently gaining funding from the Austrian government. Number 4. Triton Artificial Gill Another really great idea with a lot of promise, the Triton Artificial Gill was maybe too good to be true. Advertised as a small mobile breathing apparatus, it would have been the next evolution of scuba diving equipment, allowing divers to breathe underwater for upwards of 45 minutes up to a maximum depth of 15 feet. It wouldn't have to rely on bulky tanks since it would use special filters that extracted oxygen molecules directly from the water. Unfortunately, amateur scientists quickly debunked the technology as being unfeasible, mostly because it was impossible for enough water to pass fast enough through the filters to produce enough oxygen. Even if such a device were 100% effective and efficient, in order to draw enough oxygen from the surrounding environment, it would have to pump nearly 5 liters through its filters every 15 seconds. A second problem is that you would need somewhere to store the gas. And even though Triton schematics show a compressor, in order to work as advertised, they would have to be better than anything currently on the market. The third and final problem is modulating the amount of oxygen a diver would take in, something that bigger and bulkier breathing systems solve by adding other gases such as helium or nitrogen. Following a slew of complaints, this led Triton CEO Saeed Kadimi to cancel and refund the $800,000 Indiegogo campaign. They eventually relaunched a new campaign, pointing out that the Triton used liquid oxygen cartridges in order to work properly. So, while this may be a case of misrepresenting their product rather than an outright scam, it's nevertheless damaged their trust. And it'll probably still be a few decades before we see the sort of consumer technology that makes an independent breathing system feasible for the mass market. Number 3. Talos Iron Man Suit If you're going to waste taxpayer dollars, you have to at least hand it to the Department of Defense for being ambitious. The Tactical Light Operator Suit, or Talos, takes its cue from the Marvel Universe by outfitting a soldier in an $80 million piece of armor, replete with enough high-tech devices and capabilities to make it reminiscent of a sci-fi video game character. In conjunction with SOCOM and DARPA, the Talos suit showed a lot of promise, which included gel-like body armor that hardens instantaneously when it comes into contact with high-velocity projectiles. Unfortunately, Bringing the project from theory to application has been a long road, and critics have pointed out a number of obstacles and trade-offs in its design, which make its benefits practically impossible to achieve. Most notably, the suit in its current phase severely limits mobility and is nearly impossible to control with both hands while simultaneously holding a weapon. Again, though it would be able to track a variety of different problems facing soldiers on the ground, including a thermal regulation system that would prevent them from overheating, and would probably reduce casualties in armed conflicts, the suit doesn't come cheap. In fact, Congress has voiced its concerns from the onset, especially regarding the cost of even producing one workable prototype. Add that to the hundreds of millions more capital the team expects will be required to finish the project and implement it, and you have to wonder if you're really getting enough bang for your buck. No pun intended. Number 2. Laser Razor 
Hearing about any product with the word laser in it generally elicits a mixture of suspicion and nerdy excitement. And that was certainly the case for a startup company called Scarp who began advertising a next-gen razor. It was water-resistant, battery-powered, and yes, used laser technology to produce an incredibly close shave. However, the actual description of the product used a lot of pseudoscientific jargon, such as using a specific frequency of light to give a close shave. The only problem? Scarp didn't even have a working prototype, and according to scientists, the fiber optics involved could, at best, cut a single hair at a time, meaning you'd be spending hours in front of the mirror every morning. That didn't stop Scarp from producing a video which showed the razor cutting three hairs on the back of a man's head, but the fact it was never demonstrated doing what it was supposed to do should have been a warning. Nevertheless, they managed to bring in close to $4 million, with promises to launch their product in 2016, which of course never carried through, and led to Kickstarter banning them. According to Kickstarter, bans can't be undone, so it should have ended there, but soon after an identical product was relaunched on Indiegogo by the same company and raised another $442,000. This time they promised that 5,000 working prototypes had been made and that the issue had been in finding the proper diodes and fiber optics necessary. But until you see a 5 star rating on Amazon, it's probably a good idea not to believe everything you see or hear. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Number 1. Water Seer Another device with great potential and an innovative approach to new technology, the Water Seer, like the Fontis, was inspired as a way to help alleviate water shortages. For only $134, the alien-looking device featured a long metal cylinder that was planted six feet in the soil, where a condensation chamber at the end would collect water. On the top, a turbine would catch wind and direct air down the cylinder where the relative difference in air temperature and soil would create a condensation effect. Originally, it was marketed as being able to produce upwards of 11 gallons of fresh water a day. So it's no wonder that many people hopped aboard the water seer train. If feasible, it would represent a solution to arid areas plagued by drought, so the humanitarian implications were obvious. During their Indiegogo campaign, they managed to pull in nearly $334,000. However, a close look at the theory and practice revealed that 11 gallons was an extremely ambitious estimate. One avid Redditor went so far as to do the math, and even in a climate that was incredibly humid, he chose Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. The relative difference between soil and air temperature hovered somewhere around 8 degrees. This by itself, which was a generous estimate, doesn't necessarily guarantee condensation. Given 100% humid air at 86 degrees Fahrenheit and soil at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which are ideal circumstances, you'd get only about 0.5 ounces of water per cubic yard of air pumped. At 50% humidity, you'd get half of that. Additionally, the device functions on the premise that the relative differences in temperature will be stable, but as warm air is driven down the tube, it would heat up the cylinder and the surrounding soil, a variable that didn't seem to be taken into consideration. That isn't to say that the project, which was designed by students out of UC Berkeley, doesn't have some merit, and perhaps with further research and development might yield something of promise, but for now the analogy of squeezing water out of rock seems to hold. The only limit to what people will throw their money at seems to be the imagination of those willing to push the envelope, either academically or creatively. Sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't, and whether or not it will be remembered as a stepping stone to something greater or a complete scam is a judgment best left to history. Can you think of any other expensive projects or inventions that didn't work or other examples of wasted money in the pursuit of science? Feel free to leave a comment in the section below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.